Sorry about the long break, but gonna try and get back into making some videos. Um, so today's video is going to be about making a jet ski stand. So these are super nice when it comes to working on them. That way you're not having to work on a trailer, work on the ground, or if you have a rack like I do, you're not having to deal with that. So let's get you a little update about what's going on with the toys and projects. Um, last update was a while ago. Um, so we'll just go through a list. So right here we have the latest bike. This is a 2000 YZ125. Um, the previous owner put on a new tank and therefore was able to get the new front um, radiator shrouds, new, like a restyle kit. They put on a rear subframe that is from a newer year. Um, we have a 95 KTM 300, trying to keep as many things two stroke as possible. This is a super fun bike, needs some brake work. We might see a little bit of work on that one. This is an RM125 I got back in last summer and this guy isn't getting any spark recently. So it was running a couple of weeks ago, no spark. This was the last video, the um, CR125. We've gotten it to fire, gotten everything all sealed up. It clutch works now. The only issue I think is the timing. We either have timing issue to where it bogs out on start or we have some carb issue and we just really need to get it rejetted. Um, the current project right now is this guy that we're working on when it comes to the bikes. Uh, we have an 04 YZ450F. Um, we have it fully taken apart right now. This is the most recent bike that we've purchased. Actually, no, the 125 is. But we got it all taken apart. It's got a nice clean piston in it. Um, and the cylinder also looks pretty good. A little bit of wearing vertically but some pretty decent cross hatching. The valves are super minty. So um, just waiting on some parts for this guy. We might have a video of a reassembly on this and then firing. Um, but today's, today's video, like I was saying, um, we're gonna be building that jet ski stand. So as you can tell, I have some a lot of bikes in the way. I have jet skis on trailers. I have a, a bunk bed rack that I built for my jet ski. So we have the 550 sitting on the bottom and we have a 440 sitting up top um, it's really nice for storage to be able to stack them vertically but doesn't work too well to work on them we got the 650s chilling on the trailer so gonna build a stand that way we can bring them down off of those things and uh, start wrenching on them all right so we got a little bit of space cleared up on the table or on our workbench um, and we got some cardboard so what we're gonna do is We'll draw this a couple different ways, but these are gonna be our bunks, okay? Probably make them like three feet long or so. Um, and then underneath that, we'll have some crosses, have some vertical bars, have these braced up, get some diagonals in there just to brace everything up, call it good. So a pretty simple design. So sideways, it'll look like this. Build a nice little box underneath with a diagonal brace, another diagonal brace, and then our bunk will be sticking out and over. Bunk will be sticking out and over. Sorry about sloppy filming, hard to draw and film, and I am definitely not an artist, as you can tell. So it's kind of what we're gonna be looking at. Um, like I said, this will probably be three feet. Um, we'll probably have it be We'll see on this dimension. Um, I'll show you guys how to get that one, how I have it set up now. I'll probably just match what I have on my trailer and on my bunk bed rack, um, just so I'm matching there, but I'll show you how to grab that dimension. That way you know how far your bunks need to be apart from one another. Um, and then height is kind of just a preference for you. The reason I'm building this is I don't wanna be working on a trailer in a rack or from the ground. So I want this to kind of be like, you know, mid Greg height. That way I'm not having to bend over, but I'm also not having to tippy toe to work on top of something, so. Alrighty, so over here at like the bunk bed rack, at least that's what I'm calling it. It's a metal framed, I have it on coasters so it can roll around. Um, pretty convenient, but not the sturdiest thing in the world. Um, so this distance, center to center, we're looking at about 14 and a half inches. 
Um, but what you're really looking at is on the whole, you wanna be able to divide this middle scoop. Typically, I'll look at it from the back because you have a ride plate on the back. However, all of my skis, kind of difficult to get to. So the bunk bed is 14 and a half center to center. And the trailer, let's get down in there. Sorry about the filming. Is looking like it's right at about a foot center to center. So the bunk beds are a little bit wider. Trailers at about a foot. Um, we'll probably go with the wider option. That way we can put all of them on here and not have too bad of issues. So we'll go with about 14 and a half center to center. so we made pretty light work of that so i'll just kind of walk you through what we're looking at so um from side to side we went with 14 inches um from front to back we went with two feet and then for our bunks we went with three feet covers a majority of the ski i mean you don't have to have the full length of the ski be on a bunk as long as it's just not tipsy and then for our height um, we ended up going with a foot and a half. Um, in one of the last videos, what's under this, uh, the frame of this workbench was actually what the 550SX came with as a stand. Um, it was pretty rickety, but it's about two foot tall and it worked, but it was just a little bit too tall. You're still kind of trying to tippy toe it to get over it. Um, so we just kind of built a frame nice and easy with the 14 being on the outsides the two foots as the runners uh, built two of those and then we put in the legs and then we connected the tops and the bottoms and then for these bunks we just toenailed them in um, and when i say toenail i'm meaning we i put in a bolt and then i drove it in diagonally rather than trying to come up or come down i mean this isn't a two by four um, because wood's stupid expensive right now some off cut i'm not sure what it is but um didn't want to send some like three inch bolt through it or a three inch screw so we just toenailed it in and it's sturdy enough to hold a, a jet ski so um that'll that'll kind of be it for now um yeah so hopefully in the next few videos i can get either the 550 sx running or bring that 440 down um the 440 has I think a faulty head gasket or a cracked sleeve. It's letting water down into the crank. So we gotta figure that out. So that one will get a full tear down. The 550SX still isn't getting spark. So we have a new e-box for it. Hoping that the e-box is the ticket because the coil in the old e-box looks shot. If it's not the e-box, we'll get a new stator for it or rewind it ourselves. That way we can get spark again. Um, and then for the six, 50s um the red 6 650 i forget what it needs but we have some uh primer kit for it and then the purple one i have a gasket kit for it um, we're gonna go through and replace all of the gaskets we're gonna get it a new starter um, while we're in there tearing out the gaskets we're gonna check and see if it needs a rebuild if we got compression where we're at sitting on compression what's going on there um, it's just a little lunky on the starter. So the, maybe the starter shot, so we got a new starter for it. We also got a primer kit for that one as well. So um, stay tuned. Hopefully the videos can be a little bit more frequent. Um, trying to pick up on those. And then there's always dirt bike projects, so I might start throwing some of those in there as well. Alrighty, guys, take it easy. Talk to you soon. See ya.